dealing with negativity from others. That's the conversation we're going to have here today on Self Love Monday. How you guys doing? This is Ron Simplified Myers, author, podcaster, and your uplifting life partner. Now, this is a topic that a lot of people are actually dealing with, and of course, it does it will tear down your uh, beliefs in yourself if you allow what people say to become your reality. It is actually the reason that I did the video, and if you haven't had an opportunity to see that, the video where I talked about I am a 10 and I am perfect. Because that is really one of the things that I like to share and teach with people is you have to have that particular perspective about yourself. This is not about allowing the world to use their perspectives and allowing that to become your reality. I mean, one of the things that I talked about in the video is no one is a 10. If you go on a scale of 1 to 10, 10 being perfect, um, whatever that, whatever a person's description is to equal a 10, no one is a 10 to everyone. So if that's true, then that means it's all based on perspective. So when people are telling you that you're 5, you're 6, you're whatever, it's because they have an ideal and they're comparing you to this ideal that they've created. So that ideal becomes their perspective on what outer beauty looks like. So my thing with people is why would you allow someone's perspective, because that's what it is, or their beliefs, if that's what it is, it still belongs to them. Why would you allow that to determine how you feel about you? Which if you understand what I just said, that is probably the easiest way to overcome the negativity that comes from others because you don't allow their perspectives and their beliefs to become your reality. Now, there was a comedian I heard the other day and, and what he said is he, he actually teaches his daughter how to uh, see the things that maybe she doesn't see as perfections or things that she knows that people will talk about her. You know, people when they like to crack jokes or play the dozens as some people call it. He said, learning how to turn those things into stuff that you can actually laugh at. As we've all heard many times before, learn to laugh at yourself. If you could do that, life becomes fun. I remember uh, even someone talking about, uh, you know, like, for example, if a person was to come at you and they talk about your weight. And I remember I said this to somebody a long time ago because they came to me and they're like, oh, they kind of patted, you know how people do it. They kind of patted my belly a little bit. They're like, oh, getting, getting a little gut there. And I said, yeah, yeah, it's getting out there. See, folks, when you do that, what I just did, you diffuse the whole conversation because guess what? People don't even know where to go after that because they, quote, unquote, tried to crack a joke. But because it didn't phase you and it didn't make you go into a negative uh, feelings or as people say get into your feeling because it didn't phase you and you actually played on it and I was like yeah it's starting to get out there a little bit and I said but you know what everyone can't have the great body that you have so some of us we have to work on it a little bit better and they were instantly it flipped the script and they were instantly like oh no shoot man my body shoot I got some stuff I got to work on I said exactly Diffuse the whole conversation. Um, but what this comedian was talking about with his daughter is he was teaching her stuff like when a person does something like that, that what he would have taught her basically to say, and he didn't use this example, but what I'm using like in that my, my example, using his belief on how to deal with it is to turn that around and say, but yeah, but I can lose the weight and get my body in shape. But what are you going to do about the, the, the scar that's in between your ears? Now, <laughs> that's playing the dozens. And you guys know, I'm not saying follow that path. But it could be a thought process in your mind that will cause you to actually look at people and start laughing. Because remember I said if you can learn how to laugh, you could actually sit there and I could have had that thought process and go, yeah, that is true, but... <laughs> Look at the sword between their ears and not actually say it, but it would have been funny to me and would have had me moving on because I had already diffused the conversation by me saying, yes, that is true. 
You guys will come to realize if you diffuse conversations like that with people, they're lost. They're totally, um, I had that with some, uh, I, I told you guys about, I had a family member that they love to take the opposite sides of everything. Um, they call it, uh, they said, I just like to play the devil advocate. And I'm like, yeah, I can accept that if a person does that every now and then on certain topics. But when you do it on every single thing, even if you agree with the person, you take the opposite just to get in a disagreement, then now you're just a pessimist. And so, but this particular person, the way I learned to deal with that person was not to participate. And by that, when they said something negative, I just go, hmm. Or if they want to get into an argument, I go, okay. You have the right to that view. You guys see what I did? I diffused it. That also works with dealing with this negative situation because you can. When a person says that, you go, oh, that's a perspective. That's another way to see things. You know, I mean, you guys see what I'm saying? I'm not going to sit here and, and take that personal because you have the right to your own views. And if I wanted to play the dozens like the guy, of course, he's a comedian, so he's teaching that. But what he was really doing is he was trying to teach his daughter how to feel better about herself to look at the things that people would pick on and for her to already be able to laugh at and joke at or you guys will know where people say well I got a big nose and they go shoot man I can smell real good with this nose I ain't never worried about it. not saying that that's what you have to do but what I'm saying if you get to that point where you don't take these things serious and you learn to love what others call imperfections but you just go those are my unique which is what I talked about in the um, I am a 10 and I'm perfect you got to understand your creator created you just the way they wanted. I'm not here to tell you who to make your creator. That's on you. But your creator created you exactly the way they wanted you to be. Therefore, you are perfect. And that's why I said on a scale of 1 to 10, 10 being perfect, that makes you a 10. That, so hopefully you guys understand why I said if you get to that perspective and understand that I am a 10 and I am perfect because I am just the way I was created to be. So if you're that way, then you're able to see the nodes and go, yes. But the reason my nose is that is this good is because it makes it easier for me to smell things and, and I can grab, you know, whatever you guys, I'm not trying to figure out how to define it for yourself. I'm just giving you an example of you could take that those things that others would call negatives and find something that you can feel good about them and go, yes, well, I'm great that I, I can taste my foods or whatever. Um, I'm just throwing stuff out there real quick, but I, I, as far as off the top of my head. But I just want you guys to see that the bottom line is not taking the things that people would, would make a negative and for you to internalize it and make it how you see yourself. Someone just shared, I heard today, she made the comment, she said, she said it's a, 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 it was some guru or something that said a long time ago, but basically the bottom line is the story is the, a little bit of water cannot seek a boat unless it gets inside and then it overwhelms the boat and it's like wow that's deep when you think about it because if you don't let what people say penetrate you and it doesn't become a negative to you therefore we're dealing with this negativity and you're able to move on and it doesn't phase you um, you're able to, when a person says anything, you just go, I'm not even letting that in. I remember I went to a, a training, a long time, a sales trainer. And what he says is every day when you walk out of the house, put yourself in the bubble. And what you do is you go from the right to the left or left to the right, whatever hand you use. Well, but basically, before you walk out of the house, it's like you got in a bubble and you go zip, zip, like you put yourself in a, in a, in a, in a, in a plastic bubble. And the reason I said left to right or right to left is you're zipping yourself into that bubble. So you're going zip, zip, I'm in my bubble. And that becomes the mentality. And the reason that is to symbolize so that you can walk out of the house with that thought process, I'm in my bubble. And that means nothing you can say can penetrate what goes into this bubble because I'm, I'm, I'm enclosed. I'm not letting anything in. I'm not letting any water inside of my bubble unless it's some good stuff and it's going to elevate me then i'm going to take all that i'm put a little 
unzip it a little bit, let that come in, seek in. All the things that will help me grow and guide me in the direction that I want to go. I want that. I'm going to take that. The other stuff, woo, I'm closing the bubble real, real tight and not let that in. So the bottom line, when it comes to dealing with negativity, as you guys know, I say with everything, learn to love you some you. That is the purpose of Self Love Monday because that will block out the negativity in itself because once you get there, others' perspectives does not become your reality. And at the same time, understand, those people that do want to try to penetrate your bubble with the negativity, you get to decide whether to have them in your life or not. Depending on the role they, pay, they play, depends on whether that should become your reality. Because you guys know I've talked about, I did that with a family member that I was about to cut out of my life because when I first started getting into self-development, you know, everybody will tell you get negative people out of your life. But this particular person played a major role in my life. And I remember reading a book that says everything will die or break depending on what it is. So do it in advance. And so I did that illustration with this particular person. I said, if they weren't in my life anymore, I didn't kill them in my, in my thought process, but I envisioned they couldn't be in my life anymore. And I was like, whoa, they actually play a role in my life. And I'm like, well, how do I actually deal with them in what I consider to be a negative perspective? And that's when I came up with what well, we, we see. We don't see eye to eye because of the fact that we're arguing over our perspectives, our opinions, our views. And then I said, well, I don't have to be right. You guys follow where I'm headed. And I said, and it's not a thing about trying to prove somebody wrong. Ah, hope you guys caught that. There's my motto. And that's how it was created, which is it ain't right. It ain't wrong. It's my opinion. That's where that came from. That was my way of dealing with this particular person that I was about to cut out of my life. And so what I'm saying is when you get to that point, depending on the person, depending on the role they play in your life, depending on if you have to have them in your life or you feel, because we know you don't have to have anything, it's a choice. But if you feel like they play a major role in your life and they are significant and you don't want to cut them out, you have to get better at being able to allow them to be themselves, which you guys know for me, that is true love. When you accept people as they are, we ain't here to change them. Just accept them as they are. I didn't say agree. I said accept. We don't agree. So we can do that next step, which is we can have a conversation with them and tell them these are things that this is how I took what you said. And again, don't go after them because they'll take it personal and you guys won't get anything resolved. But you say, hey, you know what? This is the way I took what you said. And that's the way you can lead into a conversation with someone to address those issues. But after you've had that conversation, if they re refuse to change, that's when you get to make the decision on whether to keep them in your life or not. And if it is someone that plays a major role and you want to keep them in your life, then, then cut down the amount of time they're in your life, the many times that you visit. Uh, but more importantly, don't sit there and argue with them. Don't debate with them. Leave them to their own because what, you, what you'll see is just like I did with this person. As soon as they said something negative, I just go, okay. And then they were lost because they didn't know where to go from there because they were waiting on me to have a feedback so we can get into a debate. But I diffused that by not getting involved. So really, that's the key to dealing with negativity. First and foremost, as you guys know, I talk about all the time, learn to love you some you. Learn that you are 10, you are perfect. When you get that taken care of, being able to deal with the negativities of the world become easier. It also, as you guys know, makes it easier to attract a partner because the reality is then you're looking for someone who's headed in the same direction for you, with you, not someone that you have to block out the things or try to ignore their red flags or try to, I uh, had somebody say the other day, working with somebody with their red flags, she's like, well, sometimes as ladies, we just feel because we can help them, we want to help them through their red flags. Stop trying to help people through their red flags. That's why they're called red flags. Leave them alone. They can only get through their red flags. First off, if they believe it's a red flag, because it may be a red flag to you, but for them, they cool with it. So if it's a red flag for you, leave them alone, unless they want some input and they're willing to make the changes. Then later, after the red flags have been addressed, because <laughs> I used to tell family members and kept wanting to get in relationships and healing guys. I used to tell them all the time. If you want to heal them, heal them as a friend. Don't be in a relationship with him because now you got to deal with all the stuff that he's going through. 
while he's deciding on whether he's going to actually deal with this stuff or not. So help him through it if he wants to help. If not, allow him or her to be who they are. And you go ahead about your life. And, and I've always said that. Do your stuff. Let them do their stuff. And at the end, if you guys come back together after they've addressed their stuff, we can talk about whether we want to get in a relationship. But please, 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 please quit trying to get in a relationship with people that have red flags and then try to justify why you do it. So as you guys know, it ain't right, it ain't wrong. It is my opinion. Now you guys know where that came from. Uh, run on over to ronsipfivemeyers.online. Again, that's ronsipfivemeyers.online. See all the things that I've got going on. And as you guys know, if you're not having fun, you should be doing something else. Again, make sure you learn to love you some you. If you need to practice on the things that you feel are negative, learn how to where they don't become negatives about you, where whether it's your lips, your nose, whatever, whatever you think is not good about you, your stomach or whatever. I'm able to, I mean, even when I have a little weight on, which right now I'm still working on, but hey, I ain't going to take it negative and I ain't going to feel bad about myself. I believe you do it because the fact is you look and say, is it healthy for the, for the shape that I'm in? And if not, do it for health reasons, not for other people. So as you guys know, again, if you're not having fun, you should be doing some, something else. And I'll talk to you guys later. Take care. Bye-bye.